Hi, today we will be talking about adding and subtracting matrices, and I love being a mathematician because shorthand just makes your job a lot easier. Okay, so corresponding elements. Uh, first off, corresponding elements have the same address. Now, there are such things as addresses in matrices, like for example, uh, A sub 1, 1 would be the first row, first column, and that number would actually be 2 in this one. So let's call this, let's actually define this as matrix A, and we'll define this one as matrix B. Okay? All right? And, I mean, it's just pretty simple, straight up like that. So you want, you want to actually have your matrix name, and then in the subcontext you would have row, and then column, would be the next number. So that's that's basically how you work with it, okay? All right, now there's a lot of things we can actually do this. If we add them, we're going to be adding corresponding elements. So we would definitely be getting our new uh, thing. Now here's the thing. I'm not going to work with it much because I know we all know how to work with addition, but you would add 2 and 7 and you would put it in the first row, first column spot, and you would complete that for all of them, okay? Now if I did want to, which I am going to, Okay, subtraction works the same exact way. Pretty simple, straightforward, and easy. Okay. Now, if I wanted to actually set this up, and th this is actually talking about, let me see, we talked about corresponding elements. We've talked about equal, yeah, we are going to talk about equal matrices. Okay, now equal matrices are where two matrices are going to be equal. Let me show you what that looks like. All right, so let's say I have two matrices that are going to be equal. So that means corresponding spots are going to be equal. Now, when I say that, I can actually set up some actual equations. Like, for example, the 2 equals the 4x. So 2 equals 4x, and that's one equation I can work with. If you notice, the 5 corresponds with the 5, pretty easy. And then 7 corresponds with the y, so 7 equals y, that one's easy to solve. The 3 and the 0 are all corresponding. And then I would have another equation where 2 equals z squared. Okay, and I just set that up. All right, and then the next one would be negative 2 equals uh, w minus 3. Okay, and then finally we would get 0 equals a. So something pretty simple like that. Okay, and you want to notice that in the non-variable spots, if you notice there was about four of them that I left uncovered, that they should all be equal in values. Otherwise, you're dealing with an untrue statement or a false statement. Okay, so it's pretty easy to find out what x is going to be. x is going to be 1 half here. Uh, y is pretty straightforward. Now, what we would do is we would square root okay both sides and z could either be the plus or minus of the square root of 2 now would be z okay so that one's pretty simple this one we would add 3 and 1 would equal oops 1 would equal w okay and a would equal 0 so you can actually solve some quick equations just by knowing some of the information okay and just knowing that corresponding spots are equal okay as we set this up all right, so now let's say we actually had a variable matrix that we were adding with the A matrix right here, and we got A plus V matrix. Okay, and let's say that our answers were 3, 4, 9, 12, 0, 7, uh, 5, 9, negative 2. Okay, so now taking a look at this, you would just have to ask yourself, okay, 2 plus what is 3? So that matrix, you would actually just address that matrix and actually write that out. So you would actually have your matrix to be able to look like this. Jeez, that's getting sloppy really fast. And so this matrix would be 1, uh, negative 1, 2, you see 9, 0, 5, and then 7, 8, negative 2. Okay, and you could easily work your way backwards and find out what those values are going to be with the matrix, matrices equations. Now, some things you do need to know that matrices equations, uh, we do need to be very, very, very careful in how we work with them because there's a lot of different ways that you could actually write them out. 
Okay, so when you're working with matrices, equations, just remember that you can, can add or subtract or I really have hesitation saying this yeah I'm, okay you can add or subtract matrices to both sides uh, multiplication is tricky because of the sizes of different matrices okay so you have to be very careful and division does not exist division inverse matrix multiplication does exist okay so division does not exist when you're solving uh, equal, equal ma or matrix equations but inverse matrices do and you probably remember that from when we talked about uh, the inverse or if I wanted to find the variable matrix I would need to find the inverse of the coefficient matrix and then I would times that by the answer matrix okay all right, and the only way I could have done that was to actually work it that way. All right, and the zero matrix is just what it sounds like, a matrix full of zeros. So a series one by one matrix uh, for zero matrix would just be a one by one matrix, which obviously would just be one zero. Okay, and then a two by two would just be full of zeros. Now that's different from the identity matrix in that the identity matrix is just a matrices version of one. Okay, and if you remember, it is here's a two by two right here. You have one, some ones, the rest filled with zeros, and the ones go in a downward diagonal reaction for just the ones okay so this is just the matrix equivalent of one okay all right so when you're working with this stuff just be careful to remember that all of the rules that we are used to these are really the only four properties that you can carry over from real numbers to matrices and they actually are still true. So the commutative property of addition, associated property of addition, additive identity, and additive inverse. Okay, all right. And that is pretty much it to deal with uh, operations with adding and subtracting matrices. I'll talk to you later. Bye.